Welcome to All Elite Wrestling, a game where you get to play as any one of these cool people on the roster. If you just so happen to know who any of them are besides this old guy right here and that old guy right there, then you are a superstar. Give yourself a pat on the back and a nice warm glass of shut the f- It's all good though, because as long as there's a career mode, we'll find a way to make the game way stupider than it was ever meant to be. But first, I had to create the nightmare fuel that was going to be my character. I set my name to Agent 47, my display name to to Hitman, what they would call me to Willy Burger, my social media handle to Hit Burger, my birthday to April 7, my hometown to Chad, because where the hell else would I have come from, and my weapon of choice to Propane Tank, because me like Big Boom Boom, yummy yummy. <laughs> I then set my in-game pose to this because I have a very small PP and I need the world to know about it. And as the game has literally no options to choose from, this is the face that I settled with. I then copped two beautiful bright blue eyes at a discount from a blind guy who probably didn't need them anymore, and thought about all the dumb hairstyles I could have had if I wasn't cursed with male pattern baldness. Alas, I was stuck with this penis head. Now, with so many different body types to choose from, it was really hard to settle on one. But eventually, I settled on this. I like to call it CrossFit Howie... <laughs> CrossFit Howie Mandel. I then made myself about four foot tall and 500 pounds with 100% muscle mass. And then after having spent all of about five minutes, I jumped into the game, picked my dude and got ready for action. Oh yes, and because I like to suffer, I set the game to the hardest difficulty. It was quite fitting though that my journey began in the gym where I was pressing some major weight, trying to get a party pump for my evening part-time job as a stripper for MILFs in my area. My phone, however, was ringing. And because I have such a tiny pee-pee, I couldn't answer it with that. So I racked the bar and I picked up my phone. It was a message from some idiot. Apparently I'd won the lottery and all I needed to do was call back and provide my social security number, birth date, and exact wiener size. Naturally, I called straight back and gave the nice man all my personal information because I love giving away all of my money to criminals. Then after checking my banking app to see that I'd successfully cleared out my entire account, I thought that I'd celebrate by indulging in a nice break of us. Oh wait, hold on. You need money to buy that. I head into the press conference completely naked except for my armband to remind me which arm was right and which arm was left. Then the guy with the neck beard and the man bun said something about me participating in a 20-man battle royale. Now this was news to me because before the presser, they told me it was a 20-man but I was like, whatever, I need money, bro. And whilst I appreciated the sentiment, I somehow doubted that I was the hottest talent around because I was on AEW and not WWE. Then with that all done, I put on my budgie smugglers and got ready to head to the PPV, baby. Me versus 19 other goobers that didn't have what it took to make it to WWE. This was gonna be lit. Hot and toasty, I walked out of the giant air fryer I was chilling in and showed the whole world, or like the 20 people watching, how much of a stud I was. And then I prepared to beat up a bunch of dads. I didn't hesitate to get straight into beating the schnitzel out of dudes five times my size and making them cry for mommy. And after I eventually got bored of toying with the beefcake in red, I decided to switch over to the beefcake in black. And then I tossed him out of the ring directly onto his head, killing him instantly. It was great. Now, I'm not one to toot my own horn, but the truth of the matter is that I'm an absolute machine. And so I proceeded to kick the absolute bollocks out of monsters of men, one after another, after another, after another, after another, after another, etc., until I'd thrown every single person onto the floor out of the ring and then killed them all afterwards with rubber duckies. Victorious but completely exhausted, I bent over and let out a massive rip snorter that sent shockwaves through the third world. Now with the $50 I made from winning the Casino Royale, I made a brief trip across the border and came back 200 pounds heavier and covered in body hair. Great success! And after making such a stellar debut, I somehow managed to pack out the next arena in Washington DC. Everyone in the audience was clearly knees deep in the middle of a midlife crisis, just like me. Perfection. And given the fact that I was up next against Mr. I just j my pants, I wasn't particularly worried. Or maybe it was just the mind-boggling amount of apple juice I was crushing. And I tell you, it's amazing what a little bit of apple juice in the bum can do for a ring walkout. Before, after, before, after, before, after, see? The fight kicked off and I immediately looked like every dad that ever existed out of Eastern Europe. And I knew for a fact that I had the skills to take off my sandal and nail somebody in the side of their head with it from 10 
miles away. If you know, you know. And I knew that this guy needed to feel like he stood a chance. So I let him beat me up a little bit at the start so it didn't look like a one-sided landslide victory when I whooped his ass a few minutes later. Unfortunately, however, it seemed like his juice was more powerful than mine and my punches continued to bounce off his big, dark man chest. I guess that's what unyielding pussy does to a man. Nevertheless, I am tenacious and so I continued to play sock and bop and robots with his bazoongas until I finally managed to break my way through. I then crash tackled him directly into missionary position and climbed my way to the top rope to give him one of these ones. After that, because I'm a sneaky bugger, I used his very own signature move on him and then I channeled my inner Mike Tyson. You can't see me, mother- And I hopped on top and went for a ride. With my fists, there was nowhere left for old mate to go and nothing left for old mate to do. But I still had my signature move. This thing, whatever the hell this thing is called, pretty sus if you ask me, I like it. So let me ask you, have you had your orange juice today? I know I've had mine. Also, apparently I thought I did, but I didn't anymore because I came out looking like somebody's grandfather that got lost in his underpants and ended up at a pro wrestling match. My opponent, however, definitely not natty. Believe me, as a natty guy myself, I can tell when someone's not natty. It was fine, though. Then I proceeded to do all sorts of flamboyant top rope tricky dicky stuff that made my opponent look like a chump and me like a champ. Now, I hate to admit it because me balls is me pride and joy, but there was a moment when that bastard shoved his knee right into me nutbag, and so I went into a little bit of a blind rage. I don't remember what happened. I just remember that I wanted to smash everything, and so I smashed everything. Then finally I grabbed him and I finished him with his own special move. Just like this. And when I say finish him, I mean finish him. As in, he dead. Before I knew it though, I was in the locker rooms with two overweight middle-aged men who challenged me to a dance-off. And being somebody that never says no to a challenge, I discoed my way to victory. LMF belt holder in the house, lamest mother. Anyway, having dominated thus far, I attracted the attention of some old guy with a spiky leather jacket. He said some crap about some stuff, and I decided then and there that he was going to stop living. At the start of the fight, I let old mate throw a couple of kicks at the air to give him the impression that he stood a chance. And then I proceeded to bulldoze the absolute shite out of him repeatedly into a second, third, fourth, fifth retirement. And then just death. And just like that, I'd become the AEW world champion and nothing else exciting would happen for the remainder of the career mode. But let's pretend that I didn't say that so you keep watching this bloody video. Ah, bless good old Tony. He's always got good things to say about me. I've never met him in my life. I also didn't know the pharmacist this time around and I left the clinic looking a little bit off color. I was pretty sure I was all right though. But me piss burnt through the side of the porcelain toilet bowl. I didn't know why, but I just couldn't help but smash everything, especially fans through canvases. Me like big smash smash, yummy yummy. Now unfortunately this game practically has zero cutscenes to talk of, so I had to try and grab onto anything I could to use for the video. But in the absence of cutscenes, I guess it does have CM Punk. People seem to like CM Punk. And after getting dropped by the UFC, he was apparently looking for work and it was my job to get him dropped from the AEW. I don't really know what happened during this fight, but we both spent an uncomfortable amount of time rolling around on the floor crying like two beta males. And then once we finally got up, one, two, three, dead. At the next press conference, something really weird happened. Old man Sting came out of nowhere to warn me not to join up with the three weirdos that I'd been hanging out with. Clearly, I was on mushrooms. And speaking of mushrooms, I headed down to the local vegan diner and I ordered a vegan barbecue sandwich with extra mushrooms and then headed out to fight with these two lovely <laughs> So I started by showing my respects and proceeded to get down and dirty with my teammate, Walmart Stereo. After showing everyone my goods, I finished old mate once more with his own special move and I went home with his mum. Clearly they were shocked that they had lost. And to be fair, it may have just been because their muscles hadn't loaded in yet. But just then, these two bozos jumped into the ring. I have no idea who either of them are, but they look ridiculous. And they proceeded to lay the smack down on the two gentlemen that we'd already beaten the crap out of. Unnecessary, if you ask me. Later that day, I met up with the weirdo to discuss joining his secret group. But instead, we just had a nice succulent vegan meal. Then I dropped him on his head. 
Having impressed these three lovely gentlemen with my skills in the ring, they finally mustered up the courage to ask me on live television whether I would be their boyfriend. I said no. But then my not-so-secret admirers came back to seek revenge and me right in the middle of the ring in front of everybody. Very embarrassing. Apparently, however, I still won, though it sure didn't look like it. So I flew from New Orleans to Washington, D.C. to give a press conference to an audience of zero at the White House. I explained that I had Taco Bell for dinner last night and that I would never thrash the public toilets at Disneyland ever again. Anyway, with all that behind me, it was time to turn over a new leaf and to start spending time with some more normal people. I got a message from Wrestling HQ that said I could invite one person to come and have a nice succulent Chinese meal with me. So naturally, I chose this. It sure did feel good to be in the company of somebody more grounded in reality. After all, it's what my therapist told me I needed most in my life right now. And a dominatrix zombie se seemed to fit the bill splendidly. Totally pumped about my new friendship, I headed to the local TV station to give an interview with a dude who had the exact same face as me. But I guess that's what happens when there are only five or so faces in the world to choose from. Later that day, I headed to the park where I set up my own press conference and proceeded to talk to my Myself. Fortunately, there is nobody that I would rather talk to more than myself. And apparently feeling sorry for me, this guy came down to warn me that my new BFF was actually planning to double cross me. I couldn't believe it. I wouldn't believe it. Determined to prove that our bond was strong, we took to the ring to beat up 80-year-old wrestler Sting and his son, Derpy. Again, it's completely, totally, and absolutely impossible for me to imagine that this delightful specimen is anything but a lovely, completely normal member of society. She had my back when it counted. Like when I needed needed her to smash an 80 year old man's face in so I could pin his teammate for the three count. And after the fight finished, she even told me to go and see a doctor because she thought I was injured. Such a gem. So I immediately headed back to GNC for the anabolic special. Meanwhile, it seemed like this guy was jealous about the beautiful friendship that was blooming between me and Mrs. Zombie and warned me never to talk to her again or else. But I told him he wasn't my mum and that I'd see him in the ring. And in the ring was where I proceeded to beat the absolute poo-poo out of him, making him look like a wussy in front of all 40 people watching in the audience. After the fight, my lovely friend came to tell me that she was sorry that he was being such a salty wanker and proceeded to slam my face into the wall. Yep, this was the conclusion of this story arc and a clear representation of the quality and amount of effort that went into the creation of this game's campaign mode. Mwah! Chef's kiss. Frustrated and extremely disappointed, I headed down to the baseball stadium to whack a couple of giant human baseballs balls for a home run. I was determined to get my revenge though, so I challenged her and her boyfriend to a 2 vs 1 match where I proceeded to bite her foot repeatedly. That'd teach her, I said to myself chuckling with a mouthful of boot. Still, even though it was all over, I wanted the chance to explain my side of the story. So I hopped on the mic and told everyone that I had only been eating vegan meals for the past month and that I was starving. I just couldn't help myself. It was all good though because the campaign was now over and somehow my exploits had wound up with me being the executive vice president of the entire promotion. I also clearly had a drinking problem. Great success! Now to hit up those developers about actually looping the arms behind the head sitting at the desk animation instead of it just doing this forever.